viewers today, could you, could you give a sense of, um, um, tell us a little bit about your role and really uh, about your organization as well? Thank you very much for the, uh, for the opportunity. And above all, uh, or before every, everything starts in this conversation, thank you for the opportunity that you are granting us at Olympus to, to share our visions and thoughts regarding our role in healthcare. And uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have this uh, conversation and dialogue with you. And um, so thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my name is Mikel, Michelangelo Garcia. I'm, I'm leading, as you said, the medical business for Olympus. Uh, Olympus is a, a grown-up company, 100 years old, um, 100 years plus old, uh, who has been uh, lately going through a lot of changes in our portfolio. I'm pretty sure that many of you know our brand because we had been during many, many years, one of the most important camera manufacturers in the world, consumer cameras manufacturers in the world. But in the healthcare sector, we have been inventors and developers of, uh, as you were saying the other day, the scopey world, right? We were inventing endoscopes in the mid of the last century. And ever since we have devoted our technology development into up to digital technologies that allow endoscopy to evolve and uh, many other applications around up to digital technologies in, in healthcare. Lately, we have decided strategically that our future goes along with healthcare. And we have focused and uh, uh, concentrated all our resources basically in our healthcare technologies. So um, pleasure to share with, with you our thoughts about it. Thank you, Mikhail. And I have to admit, I was brought up with Olympus. I was brought up with bronchoscopies. I was an anesthesiologist when I was um, younger. Um, um, uh, and endoscopies and colonoscopies. And um, so really, um, um, I can see this is a grown up business because um, um, I remember you um, being uh, the leaders in, in the oscopy world in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, certainly in the United Kingdom. So really, we're, we're, and we're not operating in a vacuum here because I mean, you talked about um, uh, your organization maturing and looking to the next phase, but you know, we're, we're going through and really hopefully coming out of a pandemic uh, because COVID has fundamentally transformed the business. Uh, and digital modalities and interoperability are now at the center of an awful uh, uh, lot of, we, of, of what we do. And what I'd like to talk to you about is the next dimension, really. I, you know, I want to move away from the oscopies, not because they're not important, of course they are, but really what you described is the next phase onto the continuum of care. Um, and really with Olympus being much more involved in the patient journey. Um, could you describe that to me a little? And could you elaborate on that, please? Thank you, Charles. Yes, indeed, the uh, last two years have been a milestone in, in the life of many people, if not all of us. And that includes also the life of the companies. I think Olympus is, is no different to other leading global med techs where we were very much on bringing, focusing on developing and bringing technologies to, to, to the, for the sake of the patient's health. And we understood in the last times that we do have a certain responsibility in the continuum of care creation. And it's not enough that medtechs are focusing on building and bringing the technology but we do have the responsibility to ensure this continuum from, from diagnosis and early and uh, diagnosis. We are very much committed with minimally invasive therapies and also on the uh, maintenance of the health after the treatment. And having that into the perspective, um, it changes the way that we look at our responsibility. You are right, Charles, we, we hold more than 70% market share of the endoscopic world. And that is a huge responsibility. Seven out of 10 endoscopies happening in any corner of the world are done with our equipment. 
and they are only one part of the whole continuum. So we are transitioning from product and technology developers to take care for a longer responsibility along that continuum. And you're very wise to do that, Mikhail. You're very wise to do that because, of course, health and care is changing really quite dramatically. We're moving into a world of precision medicine. We're moving into a world of AI, and you're in a wonderful place to exploit that. But you mentioned minimally invasive treatments. Uh, as we move into this world of precision health before somebody really gets diagnosed, and then precision medicine after somebody gets diagnosed, Clearly, one of the greatest advantages is the ability to do things earlier than otherwise one would do them. And you are in a perfect position to really be part of that journey, as well as this issue of telecollaboration and the MDTs, the fact that you're bringing clinicians together, citizens, patients, nurses, hospitals without walls. This is an enormous area which you're starting to actually get your um, uh, uh, interdigitate with the system that exists at the moment. So I think this is the start of the big journey for Olympus, as big a journey in my view, as the journey you had when you became the big endoscopy people. And I was there for some of the beginning of that. And I think it's just as exciting, uh, the journey you're on at the moment. Definitely. And as I said, uh, from Olympus, we experience and live this from a responsibility point of view. We realize how, 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 how responsible we are to ensure that our technology is, is properly delivering the, the outcomes that it's been designed for. And there are so many um, roadblocks for the healthcare system to make the best out of technology. Yeah. And oh, to I evolve, and to evolve to a a higher level, and, yes, and yes. we have to we have to cooperate both industry and system together to bring us to the next step in healthcare. You're not alone, and um, so you saying this is you know everybody now understands that cyber attacks happen all the time. The question is how far they manage to penetrate, not if there is. This is happening to everybody all the time. What was extraordinary about Italy in February 2020 was that, of course, one, they were in a state of real pressure with the pandemic really going crazy. Uh, Spain wasn't much better very soon after. Um, so, but, and secondly, of course, that that meant deploying in places we weren't used to deploying, IT, um, having people use these systems that weren't very used to using these systems. And sadly, it seems that the, the bad actors come in on the back of those as a matter of course. So I think the fact that you actually address it, the fact that you accept it's happening, would actually make me feel much more comfortable than speaking to somebody who'd tell me, oh, it's never happened, oh, it doesn't exist. Oh, we're better than that. Because to be frank, I wouldn't believe you. Hey, hey, look, and, and it's so deep in, 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 our, in our nightmares. Um, you know, it happens to hospitals too. And we are delivering yes. data management systems to our hospitals. And we want to ensure they are protected. It, last year in Dusseldorf, a patient died because Dusseldorf hospital was attacked. And then the patient in concrete was not able to get attended and move to another hospital and he died in the journey. That's a nightmare. We, want, we don't want that to happen. Yes. So in our role, we, we feel responsible to make sure that our data management systems have IT secure barriers from the design point of view. So it is in R&D at the very beginning of the product yes. development where one of the main specs is data protection and IT security. So I would, I would choose this one to be one of our main and principal design features in our product development to ensure any product that we deliver to our hospitals, like our Vault Stream product, which manages images and data, 
across the continuum of care is perfectly storing that information in a secured manner and protected manner. And we are able to deliver this. So indeed, it is in our DNA and uh, we which is, believe which is, is, is our role here. Yeah, because if you really have aspirations to be, to be involved in interfaces across the system and in clinical workflows, which I think you're really in a good place to actually manage, one needs to have the comfort that one's dealing with a serious player who understands the fact that cybersecurity and cyber hygiene and security in general and data privacy are as important as they are. Because at the end of the day, this data-driven system we're all designing depends on the citizens trusting us with their data. The moment they don't, we're not going to do very much. So could you just describe a little bit about how you intend to interface more across the system in terms of clinical workflows? Yeah, look, uh, I was just mentioning um, um, that, uh, yes, we take care or we, 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 we support the healthcare systems on centralizing data, centralizing patient clinical important data, images, videos that are going to be labeled soon also, automatically in the future, utilizing artificial intelligence. Yeah. To, to be absolutely centralized, IT secured in the entire workflow and in the entire continuum. So no matter where in the system you are, you have access to the same data in this secured manner. And basically this is where we are focusing our efforts. Or for instance, during the workflow in OR, our uh, systems allow a workflow in the OR absolutely guided to ensure that nurses and doctors are focusing on the content and not on the workflow. We take care of that for them and ensuring that nothing is, um, is forgotten and everything is secured. Well, I think that covers it uh, really quite well because now you're able to start thinking a lot beyond the walls of the hospital where treatment can continue really after the patient physically leaves the hospital. And surely that's where your thinking is at the moment around how to encapsulate care from the beginning to the end. And perhaps the end never comes, of course, once dealing with non-communicable disease really um, along the life long continuum. Absolutely. And so that's really where your thoughts are going in terms of managing care for uh, and, patients. And and I think that there is more responsibility also. I mean, all this pandemic also with a completely change on the activity of the hospitals put many of those institutions also under financial pressure. Yep. So it is also our focus to ensure efficiency so they can find those savings thanks to our solutions that we allow them to optimize and be having a much more efficient workflows across the hospitals. So we are also trying to uh, be an ally for the hospitals in their financial management and finding uh, um, efficiencies along the journey, thanks to our systems. So what can I tell you other than thank you for spending a little bit of time uh, with me uh, today. Um, I look forward to meeting you in person hopefully in Barcelona hopefully. or, hopefully. or in, uh, in the place behind me in London. Um, 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 I, think, um, I think your journey is one which um, is going to be one of the more interesting to see over the next couple of years, as I feel really you're interdigitating with this new health and care system in every place you need to. Um, and um, I'm really delighted I have an opportunity to... Um, uh, to at least have a conversation with you. Do you have any questions for me? Can I help in any way? Well, um, um, I would say HIMSS has a, 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 a very important role in helping bringing this dialogue further, how digitization of the healthcare systems can improve patient outcomes and improving patient's health. So, I think you are playing a fundamental role to ensure that there is this dialogue so the whole system understands the opportunities 
and also the industry is able to see the needs and unmet needs of our customers. So rather than us, a, a, a question is, is, is a thank you for allowing and facilitating this dialogue. Thank you for allowing us to speak today and sharing our thoughts and to, um, yeah, basically wishing you well and uh, also looking forward meeting you here in Hamburg, in Barcelona, my hometown, or around the Big Bang in the world. Wonderful. I'll come anywhere. Thank you.